This video will cover the process for installing Autodesk Moldflow Advisor 2012. As we've already configured the license manager and set up the licenses for the product, we simply need to launch the application to start the installation wizard via either the DVD menu or by launching the executable that you downloaded from the subscription center. Once the wizard has launched, click the next button to move forward to the next page. Here you can review the licensing agreement, which I strongly recommend. Choose that you accept this agreement and select next to move to the next page. With Advisor, you have two options on this page. First, you can cho choose to trial the product for 30 days, which we'll cover in a separate video. Or if you have your product serial number and product key, you can enter in those now. These are important because these will unlock the specific functionality during the installation that will be required for the product to run properly. If you, run, if you utilize the incorrect product key, you may have restricted access to the functionality, regardless of the availability of your licenses. Therefore, the product key that you enter must be the product key for the highest level license that you have. In this case, for this example, we will use the Advisor Advanced product key, as that is the highest level product key for Advisor at all, which means there will be no restrictions regardless of our licenses. You'll notice that two messages pop up for each indicating that the serial number and the product key are valid. Should you enter in values that are invalid, you'll get that message. After you've entered in the details, select Next to move to the next page. Now, depending on whether or not you've configured a license manager before, you will either be prompted to do so now, or if you have in the past, you'll notice that this area will be grayed out. It will indicate that you've already selected a license manager. If you have not selected a license manager, simply change this to the single server or the redundant server setup that you have and specify the host name or IP address of your server and click next to move to the next page. Here it will indicate the installation path as well as the amount of disk space required to install the product. If you'd like to change this, simply select the browse option and move to a folder that you'd like to install the software on. Once you've determined this, hit next. It'll, if you've already installed this product before or if you're updating it, you'll be prompted with this message indicating that that folder already exists. That is not a problem. You can simply install over that folder. So select yes. Next you'll be prompted as to where you'd like to place your project directory. By default it is in your My Documents folder in your users directory. But if you'd like to change that to a directory that is shared by all, all users, you can select this option and on the next page you'll be prompted to specify that location. For this example, we'll just be using the default. This page will request that you specify the location of your temporary directory. The temporary directory as well can be placed anywhere you'd like. If you'd like to change the location from the default specified here, simply select the browse option and browse to the new location. Again, move forward, choose the user interface that you'd like to install, either the ribbon or the classic. Should you have any type of 3D connection installation or device, uh, the software will prompt you with a message indicating that it would like you to close any of these applications for the installation. After you've done so, move forward to the next and you can choose your integration options for other CAD programs. In this case, Pro Engineer Wildfire 5, Autodesk Inventor 2012, SolidWorks 2010. It is imperative that you have these installed on your machine if you're to check one of these boxes as it will actually look for the installation directory for them in order to install the integration. If you choose one of these options and do not have it installed, you'll get a failure notice. For this example, I will not be selecting any of these. The final page will indicate the summary of the installation, the dependencies that need to be installed, such as .NET Framework 3.5, the destination of the installation, as well as the version that you are installing. Once you've reviewed the, this content, simply select the install button and the installation for the product will begin. <laughs>